Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and I want to talk today about the five times summoning boost that has been announced by Playroom. I've seen a lot of numbers thrown around the community, lots of different videos saying it's good, it's bad. I'm here to tell you, you should not summon on this event unless you are in early to mid game and you want to get a wide variety of champions, right? The numbers just don't translate into anything good. And we're gonna look at the numbers in a moment. So what is the event just so that everyone's up to date if you haven't seen it, they're going to be doing a times five boost for a specific faction. So it's a faction summoning boost. What that basically means is when you summon an ancient, a void or a sacred, it's not applying to mythical champions, nor is it applying to Asselin. Those are excluded. Simply uh, legendary or epic or rare champions, all of those rarities, they are getting boosted by the sacred, ancient and void shards. You will have a five times opportunity that you're going to get something from the Banner Lords faction. You can see I've got the Banner Lords open here. So Androck, you cannot get him. He's the best champion in the game. You can't get him. Any of these legendaries that you can summon. So for example, you can't summon Quintus. So he's not in the pool. He is excluded. Pretty sure. I don't know if you can still summon Blade Master. I don't know if you can or even if you could. I'm, I'm, I can't remember if he was already excluded, but I think he's not. So you can't get him either. So those two are excluded. And if there's any Doom Tower epics in here, I don't think there is. Like Archmage, you can't summon Archmage, so he's out as well. So he's out of the pool. But you can get everything else, including Riz. So they're going to be boosting the odds by times five. So I'm going to explain how that process works in a moment. Now, you might be wondering, that's amazing because I can get a better chance of getting Taras, Marichka. You know, these are really powerful. Baron, very powerful champions. You might be interested in getting Aslin. He's not in the pool, as I said. Don't, don't think you can get him. He won't be in that boosted pool. You might be interested in getting Sigmund. Ronda, by the way, is another one that you can't get. So Ronda's out of the pool. Maybe you're interested in getting a, a Timmit to pair with your Casual or a Casual to pair with your Timmit. There's a good chance that, you know, they've boosted them. Cool, it sounds amazing. It's not actually that amazing, in my opinion. I think there are better options available to you. So let me take you straight to what really we want to talk about here is what is the probability difference when it's a times five for the whole faction. Currently in the game, there are 60 void summonable legendaries. I think that includes Fatalis at the moment. Obviously when Fatalis leaves us in about two weeks, we will go down to 59 unless they add another void legendary, they probably will, let's face it. So of those 60, four of them are banner lords. So right now the opportunity of me to get a, a, a void legendary, this isn't really calculating the chance of actually summoning the legendary. This is simply if I get gold, What's my odds? That's all we're looking at. We're not looking at like the boosted because they're not boosting the chance for you to get a legendary or an epic. They're simply boosting what legendary or epic you'll get. So if we have just one champion, if I just want to get the Taras right now, there's a 1.67% chance if I have no boosted event going on to that I will get one of those 60 void legendaries. Not a ban lord, just one of those void legendaries. When we go for a times 10, like we've got an Aslin times 10 right now, Obviously, this is Aslan's not void, but if he was a void champion, it would go up to 14.49%. And in our new progressive event summoning system, there's a 20.2% chance that the void that you pick on a void legendary basis, because this is only void legendaries that I'm looking at here. If you look at these, it's a 20.27% chance of getting um, the void legendary that you put in your progressive summon. That goes up to 29.76% if you continue to summon legendaries if you are fortunate and unfortunate at the same time to get three legendaries but not the one that you want. So how does times five work in general? So the way that a boosted event works is if you consider 60 is a deck of cards, right? There's 60 void legendaries. I have a 60, 60 deck of cards, individual cards. When I pick from that deck, I have one card. That is these, this 1.67% chance. For them to make it into a boosted odds, for them to give you a times five, what they essentially do is they add four more cards into the deck of the same type. So now it's not 60 unique cards. It's now 65 or 64 cards. And five of those cards are the one champion that you want. That's how you get to a five times chance because I've got five cards I can pick from. So they add four to the deck because there's already one card in the deck. So in that concept, then the opportunity goes up to 6.58%. So if I want one legendary from a deck of 60 legendaries and I'm on a times five boost, I have a 6.58% chance. So this is the first bit why I'm saying you should skip this event. It's terrible because if you really want Tarasa Marichka, then if you, you would put them in a progressive summoning event at a times 15, you've got a 20% chance of getting it, not a 6% chance. It's terrible compared. It doesn't even get anywhere near a times 10. It's almost like it's less than half. It's terrible. Do not do it. 
It's awful if that's what you want. Now, if you want either Tarasa or Marichka, then we do the same concept here. Now, the reason why this is 6.58% specifically is we're not just adding four more Taras cards. We're actually adding four more Marichka cards at the same time. We're also adding four Raglan cards and four Baron cards. So because we're there all in the boosted sum and we're boosting all of them by times four, uh, by adding four more cards each, we're essentially reducing the chance that I get the Taras down. Because even though the chance of me getting any of those four will increase, the one that I want will go down because there's more opportunities for me to get the thing that I don't want. You're increasing the deck size, but you're not actually adding, you know, 19 more Taras cards. You're actually adding four Taras cards with 16, uh, with, with what is it, four, eight, 12 other cards as well. So you're reducing the chance of me getting it. So for example, if I wanted to get either Taras or Marichka, one of those two, well, it's a 13.16%. Why? Because now I'm can pick from a series of nine additional cards i don't mind which one i get that's great and it's still not good it's still not better than times 10 so you're not even getting a rate of a times 10 to Richka. it's still less now if we go to i don't mind if i get baron to marichka or taras i don't mind if i get three of those now it's getting better it beats a times 10 but it's not better than a progressive event which is the one that you want, right? Because here we're basically saying, I don't mind if I get three of them. This one, I want the one that I want. This is a better opportunity at times 15 on a progressive event. And if you just want any of those Void Legendaries, then you get a 26% chance, which is quite good. So here's where it's kind of like where I'm saying you should skip this event. If you want one of them, then you should skip this event because it's a terrible opportunity. If you just want a Void Legendary from the Bandlords faction, it's pretty good. It's basically better than times 20. But how many of us really are, like, desperate for that Raglin? Because I've got one. And if I pulled a Raglin and it was my Void Legendary uh, Mercy, I'd be pretty upset. Which is why I don't want to engage with this system. So that's on a Void level. It is not good if you want to get one of them. Now, it will boost the chance of you getting one of the Banner Lords quite a lot to 26%. Feels pretty good. But, you know, that's the situation. Now, what about non-voids so we're looking here at basically the chances of you getting a non-void epic and a non-void legendary right now the pool of available champions in entirety in terms of all summonable epics that are not void is 215 and then all of the non-summonable legendaries that are not void is 170 of those we've got 16 epics and 13 banner lords these are non-void as well. We're looking specifically non-void here. So this is the, the percentage of the total, right? There's 16 epics, there's 13 legendaries of the ones that can be summoned. So again, we can apply the similar math. We can go, okay, what's the current opportunity that I get one of these epics from the pool of available epics when I use the shard? So when I have a single non-boosted event, I have a 0.47% chance that I'm going to walk away with an epic. That goes up to 4.46. When I add nine more cards into the deck, that gives me a 10 divided by what is it 215 so with nine it'd be two 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 four that basically gives me about a four percent chance if i add 15 it's a 6.55 and then if i get a fully stacked progressive event it's 10 percent chance that i'll get that one epic that i want when it comes to legendaries it's a 0 0.59 percent it goes to 5.59 percent 8.15 percent 10.58 percent and if i have a fully stacked progressive summoning then i'm going to get a 12.89 percent that i'll get the one champion that i want that i put in my progressive from the pool of available legendary champion this isn't banner lord specific this is any champion now the any column basically determines what is the odds if i summon a, sh a shard and i get a champion what is the odds if it's epic or legendary and it's within the it's within the one that i want right any epic or legendary the one that I want out of the total pool. So it basically is putting it to about 6.11%. The reason why I've got this is we want to kind of know, okay, because it's times five the faction, what's the chance of me actually getting a banner lord out of the total pool, whether it be epic or legendary? Normally you wouldn't care about this statistic because you only really want legendary, but it's an interesting one to do. Now, if we put it into a times five situation, well, we basically go and say, okay, well, let's look at epics here. There's 215 epics, 16 of them are, the, are basically banner lords. So we're going to take the 16 and we're going to multiply it by 4 because we're going to add, you know, additional cards for each epic. Four additional cards for every single epic. And then we're going to basically figure out, okay, I've got five now that I want. I want one of these. What is the chance of me getting the one epic now that I've boosted it by times five? It goes to 1.79% just to get the one epic you want. If you want to get any epic from the Banner Lord faction, it goes to 28.67%. So if you are looking to pick up any epic, it's pretty good summoning odds that you're going to get. It's like a 1 in 3 chance, a 1 in 4 chance, give or take, 1 in 3, 1 in 4, somewhere in the, that region, 
of a an epic from the Banner Lords. But if you want the one epic from the Banner Lords, it's a 1.79% chance. It's not better than a progressive summoning event at all. Now, if we go to legendary, well, it goes to a 2.25% chance that you're going to get one of the Banner Lord legendaries if you get legendary, which is half of a times 10, and it's not even anywhere near a times 15 or times 20. It's pretty low. Now, if you don't care which legendary you get, which is very risky because if you could easily walk away with a duplicate champ foot or, or a black knight that you don't really want. But if you were actually like in the mid game and you're like, I don't care, any legendary is pretty good for me right now, then 29.28%, it's one in three chance, give or take, that you're going to get a legendary from the Banner Lords on, a, on this kind of times five boosted opportunities. And then if we just take that concept I was talking about, there's 145 cards in the deck. That's the number of, number of cards that are going to be available to you from the Banner Lords of this combined deck, which is of 385 then you've got a 28.94% chance you're going to walk away with a Bannerlord epic or legendary from the combined deck when you boost it to times five so really the, the thing you've got to look at here is are you targeting champions do you have the need for any legendary champion if your account has no legendaries you just don't care then it's pretty good at getting one of the Bannerlords I can't commit to saying which one you're going to get but any it's pretty good if you just don't care what the legendary is if you really want the one legendary, this event is an absolute skip. You should move away. You should never do it. It's terrible. It's awful. It's it's worse than a times 10 by big margins. We're almost saying it's half as good because you're basically saying the chance that I'm going to get, say, a Taras is 6.5% when a progressive Taras would give me 20%. Now, there's no guarantees when we might, if we ever will get a progressive Taras but I'd be damn sure I'm not going to try and chase it for this opportunity. It's really low. Ah, uh, in my situation where you don't have Taras, Marichka, or Baron, well, I have Baron and I, I, and I have Raglan. If you were in a situation where you didn't have Taras, Marichka, or Baron, then you could make a case to say this is a pretty good summoning event if you don't care which one you get because it's a 19% chance. And that's probably about the same as a progressive. It's not better than a progressive, but it's about the same as a progressive then that might be an interesting statement to say. But again, I'm still sitting there and going, I don't want to run the risk that I get the 26% chance, which is I could walk away with a Raglan. That's what I wouldn't want to do. So you've got to make that decision. Do you not care about the champion? If so, it's pretty good. If you care about the champion, which I think most people should, because target farming and getting the right legendaries is the most important aspect, I would not do this. I would not engage in this event because it's pretty bad. It's bad from a single pick champion point of view. So there you go, guys. That is my opinion. That is the math in broken down in detail. I just wanted to make sure it was actually the correct math that was put out there because I've seen a lot of people do some sort of napkin math and random numbers and some people saying it's really good. But there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.